So welcome, Afini, and welcome, Chuck. How hey, are great you guys? to be here. Thanks for coming. We're going to be talking to Afini and Chuck Modiani, two activists who were at the protest last night where there were nonviolent protesters who were violently attacked by police, even though uh, congressmen and the media are saying that the uh, protesters were the violent ones, and that's not true. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to watch the way a Democratic congressman represented what happened uh, last night to the media, to CNN. Yesterday, there were over 200,000 pro-Israel demonstrators with a permit, entirely peaceful. And here you have a demonstration less than one thousandth as large that's also getting publicity. And it's getting publicity because uh, the, their willingness to attack police as they did with pepper spray is a force multiplier. A, uh, a, a few demonstrators uh, willing to attack police, getting uh, a fair amount of publicity, whereas the amount of publicity for 200,000 uh, de uh, peaceful demonstrators, proportionately less. Uh, and I just want to make a note here that we don't know exactly who was responsible for the pepper spray, uh, but as we continue to report on this story, we'll, we'll learn more. Congressman Brad Sherman, I do thank you for joining us tonight. I believe the Capitol Police. I should have offered a trigger warning before we saw that Brad Sherman, because it's such a disgusting, despicable lie, as we'll, as we'll get into shortly. And then we're going to see what Afini, who was there, had to say. We were just brutally attacked by Capitol Police. Somehow, some way, January 6th, they did not do their fucking jobs, but today they can do it. Today they can do it when it's black and brown people, when it's marginalized groups. Somehow, some way, they find the motherfucking strength to fucking shove people down on and fucking tear gas us, peaceful fucking protesters. We are peaceful fucking protesters. At the end of the day, you see what the fuck they're doing. You see what the fuck they're doing. We are out here because there are 11,000 and counting Palestinian people that have been slaughtered by the Zionist regime. That is Israel. We are out here because we are fucking tired of our fucking tax dollars going to kill children in another fucking country. That is why we are out here. And these fucking bitch ass pigs are part of the goddamn problem because these are the same motherfuckers that go over there and train with the fucking IDF and look at them look at the way they fucking act this is the militarized fucking police force this is the shit that we do within America now just fucking imagine what those children and those men and those women and those fucking grandparents in Gaza are experiencing right now but tell us what this protest was that, that you were at last night. So, yeah, uh, we were out there with Jewish Forces of Peace. And if not now, um, we were out there. The plan was to block the entrances, not to enter the building, but to block the entrance of the DNC, like do some chants, do some like programming outside. Um, and we had art. We had art and we had candles. Um, so I don't know where they came up with this whole pepper spray thing. None of us had any weapons at all. So, um, yeah. Uh, so the first group, so we we left in groups. The first group went and they were actually the ones that were locking down. And then the secondary groups come in and we were the ones that were supposed to actually be running the programming. Um, but I'm going to be real with you, Katie. Um, as you know, I've done a lot of protests. I've been in a lot of you know, situations like that, I have never seen a protest escalate as quickly and as violently as that one did. Um, I I was probably only out there for like three minutes before it started getting like really, really crazy. The first thing that we started to do was try to like hold like a, a line, right? Because number one, the police were escalating. They were swinging these big gates at us. Like, I don't know if y'all saw like the partition barriers. Um, people were getting knocked to the ground. They were like, I got pepper sprayed, but I mean, like I said, I have more experience like pepper spray and CS gas and other people do, especially because being in the military, they intentionally expose you to pepper spray and the CS gas. Um, so I was, I definitely wasn't affected as much as like other comrades were, but people were like on the ground getting trampled by police, like eyes burning, <laughs> like it's 
bodies burning also because especially with those like tear like those tear gas pellets they don't just burn your eyes they literally burn your skin they they get into your hair like into your clothes so anytime you touch your face you touch your eyes you're, you're like it feels like you're getting pepper sprayed all over again and for me just experiencing like that kind of like just the push and pull getting t getting pushed over by police officers getting like shoved getting hit by bikes it's Again, for people that were singing and that had candles, we had microphones and megaphones. If we were, I mean, in 2020, I can definitely say there was a different level of aggression, even from our side, because of how much we have been dealing with the police. We started really not matching their energy because we could never match the use of force that they have considering. But even just the way we moved, we were prepared for that type of aggression in 2020. We were not prepared for that last night. That was not that that was so just to experience number one, the the quickness of the escalate of the escalation and also just how aggressive they were was genuinely shocking to me. Um and I feel especially especially for my Jewish brothers and sisters that were actually blocking the doors, that got thrown down the stairs. I can only really imagine how their bodies are feeling, how they're feeling mentally today. Um, but just watching it for me was like triggering in ways that I just, I don't think I have fully realized. I just simply, cause I really haven't processed everything. Um, but like they were fucking us up. Like they were fucking us up. Like we were like, like we were meeting them with some, with right. some of that. With force. I don't know if Chuck wants to add anything. You said it. You said it last night. You said what we saw. You're saying it now. I want to I do want to add that there is a vigil prior to being at the DNC. And it was a beautiful vigil. And it was a vigil where you had um, a Christian minister. You had um, people of Muslim faith. You had um, rabbis all talk about a shared value of human life and, and how human life is precious. And that's how it started. And a lot of what we saw at the DNC was bringing that vigil over there, bringing the candles over there, coming out of love, coming out of peace, and, and having ceasefire written down. And so let's be clear, this was not a, a police-involved um, brutality. This was police-initiated. So when people are saying it was violent. Well, yeah, it was violent because police initiated violence. When people say there was pepper spray, yeah, there was pepper spray because people, the police had pepper spray for no good reason. And then when you actually look at their language, what they said was, Brad Sherman, was that there were police who suffered from being pepper sprayed. Now listen to that, being pepper sprayed. By who were you pepper sprayed by? By a fellow officer, that's who you were pepper sprayed by. But by the untrained ear or the media stenographers who just um, reprint statements, will infer that a protester had that pepper spray. No, they they caught that pepper spray from each other. And anyone who's been in that situation knows you're always going to catch a little bit. So the violence was initiated by police, perpetuated by police, and amplified by the likes of Brand Sherman and CNN and um, a bunch of media liars. And that's why I'm thankful for people like you, Katie, who are, who are bringing the truth, not just today, but for a long time, particularly in the area of anti Semitism being confused for anti-Zionism. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm going to share what Jewish Voice for Peace, because the rally last night was organized by Jewish Voice for Peace, and if not now, and here's what they said happened. In so many of our traditions, we light candles for the dead. I'm here today calling for a ceasefire to honor the 1,200 Israelis killed on October 7th, the more than 11,200 Palestinians killed since then, over 12,400 divine lights devastatingly extinguished. I'm here to say not one more, to pray and to plead for those in power in our government to do everything they can to save lives, to free hostages, to send the prisoners home. So that's a great video that explains what JVP, Jewish Voice for Peace, was doing there. And so that's what really happened. And that matches up, of course, with what you guys just both reported. It's unbelievable that these people are lying in such a blatant way that's so contradicted by um, what is captured on video and in photos. In fact, let me just share this one photo 
of a protester, again, nonviolent protester, being pepper sprayed. And you can see very clearly that this very angry cop is spraying this woman. You can see the pepper spray coming straight out of his can and into this poor woman's eye who is there not violent, not armed, calling for a ceasefire to a genocidal war. And that's what she gets. She gets pepper sprayed and then she gets called violent. And that same cop actually is present in another video. <laughs> There he is, you see? The same cop. So that's a cop uh, trampling over these uh, lights that symbolize the 11,000 people killed. That same cop. Um, I feel like it's like a perfect, it's a perfect visual for exactly what's going on right now. Um, you know, I'm going to be real, like, clearly I'm a little emotional now, but it's just, we are angry for a reason, but yes, we are angry, but we're also grieving. We are sad. We are taking in all of the photos and the videos of what is going on um, in Gaza and what is happening to the Palestinian people. And the reason why we are out, out there and we'll continue to stay out there is because we know that this needs to be stopped. And these are the people that are in power that could actually stop this. These are the people who we are literally paying their salaries we give, they give them health care. They have security details that come out of our tax dollar pockets. So they should listen to us and they should not, as they instructed the Capitol Police to do, use as much force as possible against peaceful protesters, against grieving people. Because that's really, that's really what this is. This is an expression of our grief. It's an expression of our rage. And it's an expression of our solidarity to the Palestinian people. And to see like, just the indifference it's i'm just i just know i'm frustrated and i know that we're no strangers to police violence like chuck and i like we've done a lot of this work um over the like together over the past four years and especially in 2020 you know there were like what we're seeing here like there was hours of that for over 200 for over 200 days we dealt with hours of that treatment and that behavior from um, the police, not just Capitol Police, MPD, Secret Service. So it's just, I think at what point is the mainstream media especially gonna get, like kind of get the picture that our, the protests for black and Palestinian people especially are always gonna be treated with a different level of violence than say a, cl a climate protest or a gun violence protest. It's just, they're not going to get, they're just not getting the same level of aggression at these other types of protests. So it's just, I don't know, like to see what Brad Sherman said and to know that the mainstream media, MSNBC, they're just going to, they're going to run with that. They're going to run with that narrative and it completely dehumanizes the people that we're advocating for. And that's the most frustrating part of all of this. Right. Like you said in, in, in that video of you, you were kind of saying like, this is what they're doing to us. So just imagine what they're doing over there. Yeah. Like, I mean, we don't, I, I mean, honestly, there are, I'm sure there are many things that the Palestinian people do not show us, um, but we don't have to imagine it, you know, like we can see it. The uh, eyes on eyes on Palestine uh, Motaz, P Plestia, like these people that are on the ground that are actually sharing their stories so bravely. You have parents holding up the body parts of their children, you know? So it's just, imagine, imagine what it feels like, what it feels like to actually be in it 24 seven and to, on top of that, be hungry, be thirsty, be sleep deprived, because the nighttime is the scariest time, is the scariest time for Palestinian people in, in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank as well.